Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Steven, and today, tonight, whenever the heck you're watching this, we are getting into mistakes that brand new whiskey drinkers make all the time. But before we do that, please do me that favor. Like, comment, and subscribe. Helps us out a ton, and we appreciate the support. But let's get in today's video. If we're being completely honest, some of these mistakes, like veteran whiskey drinkers will do all the time sometimes i find myself making these mistakes so there's no judgment at all with these but these are five things that if you're brand new to whiskey or you're just kind of starting to get into whiskey maybe these are things to consider before you go out and buy that next bottle the first mistake i would say try to avoid doing this is just buying budget bottles so there's there are perks to buying budget bottles is because your money goes further you can try new distilleries new different flavor profiles things of that nature but it can get to a point where you buy too many budget bottles there can be too many budget bottles you'll have a collection growing you'll have a you know you start off with like five bottles and it suddenly becomes 20 and you have 15 so like three quarters of your collection is just $20 bottles like you need to allow yourself to maybe spend a little bit more on a bottle once you find a bottle you like and kind of go up that ladder because there are perks to buying more expensive bottles to to a certain extent like I think at 80 nowadays is kind of the cusp of like where your value kind of it's just it doesn't work anymore there are some phenomenal bottles under like the 20 30 dollar range but you don't want to buy just 20 and 30 dollar bottles you kind of want to get a variance you know maybe a few 50 to 60 dollar bottles nowadays i'm finding some of the best whiskey i have in my collection is at like that 60 65 dollar range so don't buy only budget bottles as you start expanding and buying more whiskey ensure that you're buying you know more than just that cheap stuff because honestly the flavor profile is gonna follow the price point up until a certain price and i'll let you decide that for me it's 80 but you know your call and then the next one after that would be hunting only the limited stuff so when you get into the whiskey game especially the bourbon game you know the names buffalo trace or like some of those limited edition bottles the ones that they put up side on the shelves the ones that they mark up don't only hunt those bottles there's a thousand amazing bottles that sit on the shelves nowadays that you are walking right past to just buy a $200 bottle of Blanton's or you know a Stag Junior for $400 when let's be honest you could buy four or five maybe six other really phenomenal bottles for that price point doing that would allow you to not only expand the amount of bottles you have it would expand the amount of bottles you've tried thus kind of expanding your flavor profile maybe trying a new distillery as well as overall you have way more whiskey then so yeah don't buy the bottles just because they're there's like the limited edition version or there's the name buffalo trace associated to it there's a lot of great stuff that just sits there on the shelves so don't minimize yourself to only hunting and only trying to get those rare limited stuff because you're going to be overlooking some phenomenal bottles and then after that now that we're done talking about you know don't only buy Buffalo Trace products. We're going to get into don't buy whiskey based off of the way it looks. And I guess I'll use Blanton's as an example because of Buffalo Trace product and whatnot. It is one of the most bitching bottles out there. The Blanton's bottle, the grenade looks dope as hell. But you should not be buying a bottle just because it looks like a grenade or it has like a suit of armor on top of it or it comes in a dope box. Don't buy whiskey because it looks cool because often, usually you're way overspending for an adequate bottle and you're buying $30 or $40 just for a cool box or a weird little medallion or maybe like a key that flink like kind of dangles on the side and stuff. Those are things you don't need. The most important thing as a beginner whiskey drinker or your most important thing should be the whiskey itself. That's why you're in the game. We're not trying to collect. You're opening up the corks. You're trying new whiskey. You're exploring the new 
world of whiskey. So don't buy things because of the packaging. The packaging is all garbage. It's, I mean, not all garbage. There's some really dope bottles that actually have really phenomenal whiskeys. Like my personal favorite right now is Westward. That's an American single malt, but I love the heck out of that geometry bottle. But with that being said, don't buy the bottles based off of how cool it looks. Buy the bottle, buy that whiskey for the actual whiskey itself. So I'd maybe do a little bit of research before you go in and buy a bottle. If you like the way a bottle looks and whatnot, maybe do a little quick research, like, you know, Google it for five minutes, see what other people think about it. If you haven't heard anything about that bottle, because more often than not, the bottles with phenomenal branding are usually not as good as the ones with crappy branding. And I would take crappy branding and good whiskey over a bad bottle of whiskey and amazing branding any day of the week. After that one, kind of going on that whole concept of research, buy bottles based off of your own independent research and not someone else's. I'll explain why. So what I see more often than not is, especially liquor stores, like this is this is mostly just, honestly, don't listen to what the liquor store employees have to say. Not always are they wrong. Not always are they wrong. I'm not saying that because there there's a few liquor stores in my area where there's actually huge whiskey nerds and they're really good at picking. But for example, like Total Wines, they just have random people working there and they are not whiskey nerds. They're not whiskey consumers or whatever. And all the time, every time I go there, there's always someone being like, hey, you should try out Chestnut Farms or some random like Total Wine endorsed bottle that they're being told to push and sell on people. That is just total garbage. And sometimes outside of that as well, people have different flavor profiles and different interests. So I would research a bottle, kind of see exactly what that bottle is about before you spend your money on it. Because, you know, whiskey is not really refundable type thing. So you want to make sure you do your research and you know what the bottle is when you're getting into it, especially when you start getting away from those budget bottles and you start getting to the $65, $80 bottles because those have, you know, financial implications that the other ones don't have. And the last mistake I would say you should try to avoid is limiting yourself. Don't horseshoe yourself into one subsection of the world of whiskey. I did that myself personally. Uh, out of all of these mistakes, this is probably the biggest one I personally fell into. And that was getting stuck for a year and a half of like my whole whiskey journey of bourbon, 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 bourbon. And that's all I drank. I didn't buy any scotch, didn't buy any rye whiskey. I was just a bourbon guy. And bourbon, it's kind of a smaller category, especially in the giant, vast American whiskey or world whiskey sphere. Bourbon is a very small category. It's an amazing category. It's still honestly probably one of my favorites. I think American single malt is my personal favorite, but bourbon was originally the only one I would drink, the only one I would buy. But that limited myself of the kinds of whiskey I've tried. Now I've expanded myself into scotch, American single malts, rye whiskey, other world whiskey. I've tried some Danish whiskey. I've tried some Japanese whiskey. And this year I plan on trying to find some other bottles. Either which way, long story short, don't limit the kind of bottles you want to try. You don't know if you don't like something if you haven't tried it. So don't not buy rye whiskey just because people say, oh, I don't really like rye whiskey. Maybe get a pour of it at a bar, give it a try, you know, expand your flavor profile, your palate, see what you like, what you don't like, because you don't know what you don't know. So don't limit yourself just because that's what other people do, or that's what other people say you should be into. But also that being said, like sometimes there are people who are like, I'm a bourbon drinker because I don't like anything else. And there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But that is a wrap for today's video. Please do me that favor, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below what you thought about my mistakes list. And if you have any you think I was out of line with or any that you would like to add, you know, what, what's your thoughts on it? Also check out the Facebook, Instagram, and the Patreon. Links for all that stuff are down there below. That is a wrap for today's video. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you later.